Good morning, brothers and sisters. So, about 10 o'clock in the morning here, Houston. I just left Walmart buying some trash bags because I got to sack up all my clothes. One day I decided to rain. Damn it, I forgot that tape. But um, it decided to rain one day and being that the tent has a lot of wear and tear, there was water that leaked inside and leaked inside of what I had my clothes in. So a lot of clothes, probably for the last, what, oh, hell, I would say month, have just been sitting in this container with water. So when that type of stuff happens, I have to wash and rinse probably twice. So that's already like a $10 cycle. And then I dry them for like 45 minutes to really get a lot of that bacteria and stuff off. So it does cost a pretty penny to wash clothes. Um, hopefully next time I don't have that mistake. But uh, like I said, the tent has a lot of wear and tear. So when I had organized the tent, this was back when it was still on the ground. Um, I knew when it rained that it would leak inside of where it leaked into, but I didn't think it would leak that bad. So hopefully next time I'm more prepared. Like I said, man, it's, I hate spending money every day, but then when I look at it like, well, what the fuck are you gonna do, dude? Are you gonna sit here and just let stuff fall apart for the sake of saving money? That was something that my old roommate used to do. That dirty ass bastard, he would not wash his ass he would not wash his clothes. He would not go buy more toothpaste. He wouldn't do anything if he could just get it from me. Because in my household, we were raised that way. When you run out of shampoo and conditioner, go ask mom to buy shampoo and conditioner. Don't be looking at her all stupid when she come back and you don't have shampoo and conditioner. Because she's going to tell you, you should have told me that when I was at the store. Y'all running out of stuff and then you want to wait till the last minute. That was one thing that I tell you, man, if I had $100 for every time she said last minute, Jesus Christ. But that was the problem. She hated that. My parents hated that, waiting to the last minute to ask for something instead of taking care of it before it completely runs out. You know, so when me and my roommate ended up living together, that's what he did. If he could sneak toothpaste, he'll sneak the toothpaste. If he could sneak alcohol, he'll sneak the alcohol. It took me to the point where I started seeing like, man, how the hell is my shit being depleted so quick? I said, oh yeah, you one of them niggas. You one of them niggas. And you don't even ask. Like, you don't say, hey man, I use some of your toothpaste, bro. I'm gonna go get my own when I get a chance. No, 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 no. That's not what you do. You just keep using it and using it and using it and using it, hoping I don't say nothing or notice or whatever. No, nah, man, that shit is, that shit is gross. So, um, that's why I normally just have a lot of conflictions with myself as far as like, damn boy, like do I really feel like doing any of this crap? Hell no. The fact that I bought these $15 shoes yesterday from Walmart is the only reason why I'm doing all of this walking. Um, so what happened yesterday at work? Well, came in, we got a new assistant manager, big guy. Uh, of course I wasted money on buying a pizza instead of just making a pizza because I don't, I don't know what kind of manager he is. You see? You see? You know, for the guy that said, man, you a bum. For the guy that said, you a bum. Yeah, well, a bum would've tried to sneak pizza. A bum would've tried to sneak shit without, I know, I walked right up to him, I said, hey man, can you ring me up for a pepperoni pizza? And knowing goddamn well I didn't feel like paying for nothing but I paid for it anyway because I didn't want no problems. So everybody's like, well, who's gonna be the manager later on tonight? And that's Tom. Tom is the white boy I told y'all about, 21 years old. He's a product of his city life out here where he know a lot about nothing. Um, what I mean by that is he'll be sitting there trying to tell you something. You know, you wanna put the cheese on there so that it culminates and it, when it goes into the oven, it causes like a like a reaction, like a chemical reaction that makes the left side of the cheese composite with the right side. Shut your goddamn mouth. Damn, boy, these people out here want to sound so damn smart. 
dumb than a box of motherfucking rocks. Shut up. Shit. So he comes into work. Um, and I, I had already seen what was going on because um, we didn't have a lot of people working anyway. So I told myself, I was, I'll, I'll go in there and I'll stand on the oven, you know, grab the pizzas out the oven and stuff like that. And so time comes up to me. See, you guys, people being me, I've seen it. Being me, living in this skin, it sucks at times, more times than not, because I always keep a mental note of when people are around me that close, can they help themselves? Can you just not help, can you help yourself to not call my name? This is the same shit I talked about with Africa. These people cannot stand around me for no longer than five seconds without asking me for something, without telling me something. And it gets to the point where it's like, you can tell these people probably never been in charge of anything in their life. So they just, you know, hey, and it's crazy when you watch different people work and you notice different tendencies of some people like, why the hell when Africa work, there's a lot of talking going on. Why the hell when Africa work, we get all this, can you do this? Can, can you do that? Can someone start on the dishes? Can you do that? We got to care. That didn't happen yesterday. That didn't happen yesterday. So Tom wants to, can't help himself. Got something to tell me. Hey, um, I want you to stay on the line today. I mean, I want you to stay on the oven today because, um, you know, we see, and I'm sitting there like, boy, shut your fucking mouth. I'm already here. <laughs> I'm already here, but you can't help yourself. You guys just have to flap your fucking gums. Y'all have to make you sit. Y'all have to make y'all sound like y'all have really caused, uh, caused a difference in the workplace when you come into work. Oh man, everything was all over the place. But when I got there, everything changed. You guys make me sick, bro. Y'all cannot walk past somebody like myself without saying something. You know, um, again, Charles, I need you to stay on the oven. That's where I'm at, nigga. I'm not moving because I'm not needed anywhere else. But you just wanna say something so bad. So I'm giving this nigga the cold shoulder. Literally and figuratively. Like, I, I'm, I'm kinda just trying to get through an eight hour shift. But then I'm like, bro, I'm not in the mood. I'm really not. And I told y'all, man, this heat, it, it really does a lot. It does a lot to one's attitude where you're just not in the mood, at least me. And so I'm sitting there telling this nigga like, dog, I'm not, uh, you know, like I, I didn't tell him, but I'm like, nigga, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not moving. I'm not needed anywhere else. Like it makes no sense to even say that. I need you to stay on oven. So I can see it in his face. He started getting frustrated. He started getting mad because I'm not looking at him in the face. He's getting mad now because everything he's saying i'm like looking all over the place i'm like yeah you know whatever all right uh -huh. and so i could see him gripping his teeth he called my name and i looked at him real real slow like what do you want and he was like i can see him gripping his teeth and he's like hey i need you to uh i need you to run these orders out no you don't you don't need me to run nothing out bro you just have some type of problem where you feel like you have to say something you have to be in charge God damn, man, part of being a manager is trusting that other adults know what they're doing. You're trying to keep your hand on the pulse. You're trying to keep your hand and the finger on the, on the pulse of everything going on in there. And you making yourself more mad, dumbass. That's why I said it's a product of this city life where these people probably in third grade was class president. Oh my God, you made an A plus on your spelling bee. You all of a sudden now qualify to be the class president. Hooray! Next thing you know, you a goddamn senior and you think that you didn't graduated from law school or something. It's so disgusting. So, you know, again, this is why people say, why you, why, why you can't keep no job? It's because people normally have problems within themselves. So when they come dealing with me and they see that I'm, I'm very stone cold, then they start to like, 
And is it me? Am I seeing anything wrong? I didn't say anything wrong to him, did I? Okay. These are people that are weak. Very weak. God damn, these clothes are fucking heavy, dude. Um, these people are very weak. And they, uh, they really, really, uh, they want attention. They want to find somebody, some way, somehow, to make themselves feel useful. See, when Ed is at work, Ed don't do much talking. Ed don't do much talking. Thus, why when I when they start talking, when, when you do get a manager that's in there flapping their fucking gums and make sure that goes over there and make sure this goes, it's like dog, like that's what gets frustrating. It's like if the main manager is not doing this shit, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it? So, of course, he ends up telling me, okay, Charles. First thing first, like, when someone's talking to you, you need to look them in the eye, okay? And I'm, I'm, in real time, I'm like, dude, I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm clearly not doing anything wrong, but because this is somebody who, again, man, I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. If you got a problem with yourself, if you've never seen anybody act like me uh, uh, outside of television, you're going to be real bothered. I'm not built for these work environments. And I've, I've, I've gauged myself in that area for several years. And it always, it always results in the same. Like, it seems like out of a, a place of 700 people, I'm the only one being bothered. I'm the only one being fucked with. It just seems inevitable. Constant. Everybody else is doing this, that, and the third, but Charles is the one that needs to be talked to. So, um, you know, after he said what he said, then I was just like, dog, like, please leave me alone. And I know what he's gonna say. I told you, this is the same guy that told me, I don't know why Ed talks so much shit about you. Yeah, you probably do now. You probably do now. Charles is really cool, but it's like he just has an attitude. Yeah, I don't have an attitude. I have an attitude that's suited for this type of stupid ass work environment. Of people who are very complacent. People that are very, uh, people that are in, in positions that they don't deserve. Or they have no experience in it. Y'all just kind of, again, it's an archetype. Tall. You kind of look like a young adult. I could tell when I walk into places who's going to be manager and who's not. I could tell that like it's nothing. Um, but yeah, that's what happened yesterday, man. Just wants to keep fucking with me and 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 fucking with me. Because I'm an easygoing dude. You got the one guy in there named Caesar. He's that guy. Caesar's the guy that's like, you well, you know, see, you, you know, if you think it negative, then negative always gonna result in you can't think positive. So you gotta just be positive, you know? Like you can't be negative. Shut your basic ass up. Shut the fuck up. God damn, he the type of nigga that's teaching his kids. See, you know, you got to, when you wake up in the morning, you know, you got to make your bed because if you don't start making your bed, you probably going to be unemployed. <laughs> like, you basic ass, life lesson having ass nigga. Shut up. This is why I don't talk to people when I go to work because they're very shallow. Ask this nigga, so are you a sports guy? Yeah, I like sports. I, I like ball. I Okay, well, anything else you want to engage in? Do you like a team or anything? These people are so spiritually bankrupt, bro. They have no fucking, no, they don't know how to start a conversation. They don't know where to take a conversation. But everybody likes to laugh when CJ go on his, like, 
I mean, I don't know what comedian out there, but it's like I use profanity, but at the same time, I'm dead ass serious. So if I'm telling people like, man, the nigga that stole my damn food and I, I talked to him, I said, yes, I said, man, how the hell can you be so hungry and all you do is drive and deliver pizza? Why the hell do you come back in this building and you start grabbing food that ain't yours? All you doing is driving, nigga. And so you hear, um, I hear Tom and them laughing like, this nigga, he funny as hell. I'm just like, I'm not trying to be funny, but at the same time, I'd rather you laugh than to just, you know, than to think I'm angry because the last thing I need y'all to do is start crying and saying, he's mean, he too mean, he too mean to me. Uh, I'm 38 years old. He hurt my feelings. So, this is why when I had posted that, that video and I used the thumbnail, I'm dead inside. Yeah. A lot of what I do is just empty. And it's because they've made the world this way. So, I go into a lot of situations just quiet. I don't talk. I don't care to talk to you. I don't care to want to get to know you. I already know you. I already know you, and I don't even have to know your name. So, if I got to work with Africa today, expect kind of the same shit. Because, wouldn't you know, do you think Africa fucked with me about weighing out my shit the last time we worked? Nope. But I told y'all that one day, she just could not stay off my ass about it. Charles, you're not weighing it out. Charles, the scale's not even on. Charles. But then I had watched you on another day like, she's not even bothering me right now. She's not bothering me about this. I wonder why. I wonder why. That's why I said I do not belong in this workplace. This is, the, this is how people conduct themselves. Complain for no reason. One minute they acting like this, the next minute they want to behave like this. I don't have time for them games. I've been and broke your fucking neck. Or I've been and told you something like girls like Africa. I've made girls like that cry before. Just when I tell them like, man, go sit your skinny little dumb ass down, bitch. Then they'll just be like, what did I do? He just, he just flipped out on me. No, I didn't. I don't, I don't have the energy to just randomly flip out on people. So you must have did something to piss me off. And of course, like I say, then he walk up to me. Hey, Charles, do you mind uh, staying like, I know I got you till 10, but can you stay like an extra 15 minutes? And I'll start rolling my eyes like, bro, I already knew that shit was going to happen. I told him, I said, I already knew y'all was going to do this shit. So, yeah, I got you. But see, what is, what is that a result of? Panic. He's panicking because he doesn't know. You see... Instead of spending all your time asking people to do this, asking people to do that, why don't you start doing it and ask someone to help you do it? Instead of trying to assign people, you go over there and you go over there and you go over there. It don't work like that, dog. It don't work like that, dog. So I got a lot of stuff I got to get done today, guys. Thank y'all for listening to me and I'm out.